Welcome back to Falcons Franchise. A couple of tough losses back to back, but we're looking to get back in the driver's seat of the NFC South today because we're going to win out and we're going to make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, we're probably not. But three and six could be worse. Could be 0 and 9. Math tells me that it could be, in fact, worse. Anyway, we've got team turmoil. The team's like not really gelling that well right now, obviously. And a uh, coach. There are reports of a divide in the locker room between the offense and the defense, which has been struggling. How are we handling it? I just imagine it's like a scene out of Greece or something. You got like, <laughs> you got the defense and the offense each on their own side. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's only funny to me, but I think that would be insane if the offense and the defense were like, like standing, staring across the locker room at each other. I don't know. Can we guarantee a win? I can't even remember who we're playing. You know what? Yes, we're going to guarantee a win <laughs> because winning cures everything, and this is no different. We're working hard on improving the defense to be a more well-rounded team, but we'll keep winning until that happens. So there you go. Goal is to win, as it always is. Allow fewer offensive touchdowns to increase your defense's morale. Well... Uh, what does that even mean? Allow fewer. Fewer than what? Just less in general? That seems incredibly vague. Is that just me? Maybe it is. But even if we were to lose, we do have the future in sight. And as I talked about briefly in a previous episode, Dante Boston seems to be the guy we want to get in position to draft. We need help on the edge. And Dante Boston seems like the guy. Six foot four, 269 pounds, 21 years old out of LSU. B block shedding, A power moves, A finesse moves, A tackling. When you see the rest of the skills, A awareness, A play rec, if I didn't mention those already. Hit power could also be good. Pursuit could also be very good. And I would go out on a limb and say this is clearly a top five player in the in the class. And potentially a generational player when you factor in that he's a physical player who delivers bone crushing hits that's the big hitter trait loves to utilize a spin as a counter move that's the spin move trait as a rusher has a swift arm over move in his arsenal that should be the swim move will utilize power and leverage to both through pass protectors clearly speed to power bull rush has a motor that runs through the whistle that's the high motor trait often looks to rip the ball from runners that's the Strip ball trait, I would assume. And then lacks discipline resulting in avoidable penalties. Whatever at that point. Maybe we get, you know, a roughing the passer every once in a while. Put the fear of God in the opposing quarterback. And that's what Dante Boston has the potential to be able to do. Great to elite acceleration, agility, and jumping. Good to great change of direction and speed. And then solid to good strength. Dante Boston, yeah, not going to guarantee that he's a generational player but has the potential to be, and it certainly appears to be the best player in the draft up to this point. So yes, Dante Boston is number one on the draft board, and we will certainly consider a trade up to get him, even if that means going up to number one. So some of you want to see us tank and lose. That's just not the way we're going to play the game. It'll happen naturally. Believe me, I don't need to try to lose. It just happens naturally. Against Kyler Murray, I'm not really too worried about the QB scramble. I'm really more worried about, I would say, just not being torn apart through the air. And I, I think we're going to go ahead and keep our player health and fatigue on the same. And then offensively, I think blitz counter is pretty awful. Now, the Cardinals defense is pretty good in this scenario. I'm not saying in real life. They have some real holes. But we're starting to worry about fatigue a little bit. You know, Bijan's going down a bit. Kyle Pitts. So I think we're going to go ahead and give the backups the reps at running back and receiver. Maybe, maybe we'll split with receiver. And then backups at the tight end position. Offensive line should be fine. They should be used to it. Maybe we'll just split to be safe. And hopefully everyone stays healthy. Because yes, Bijan's been getting so many carries. I'm fully aware. He's our best player, probably. But we got to slow it down a little bit. I want to get Tyler Algier more carries. I'm trying to work on the 
auto sub sliders in order to get Algier and even like Cordero Patterson into the game more, but specifically Algier at running back. Patterson's really more of a receiver for us nowadays. And it's just, it isn't working up to this point. So I'm going to keep toying around with the auto sub settings in order to get Bijan off the field if he gets a little bit tired. We'll do some mini games and hopefully get some XP and go into this game with momentum and come away with our fourth win of the season. I still kind of want to consider taking Matthew Bergeron out of this spot. It's just that it's so tough to get offensive linemen XP in general. So if we don't have him in there as a focus player, he's never, ever, ever, ever really going to develop. And if he's going to be a starting guard for us, we need him to get better. So I, I'd, it'd be nice to get the extra XP from actually doing drills. But I just, I don't know. We're just getting screwed over by the game, not having any drills for offensive linemen. So it's just frustrating. And it's such a tease, too. It tells you minigame available, but there are no minigames for offensive linemen. As Troy Anderson has a back strain, he's going to miss this week. Can Troy Anderson stay healthy for a game or two? Can we have one stretch of games where Troy Anderson actually shows up and plays? This guy gets injured every single week. He doesn't play. Caden Ellis is a linebacker that has started every game for us, I believe. 63 tackles. I, I've been using him, so 16 for loss, 4 sacks, 2 picks. He's been incredible. Where is Troy Anderson? Troy Anderson has 22 tackles, 8 for loss and a sack, but 22 compared to 63, and they're both starters. Unreal. He's been useless. Useless. Well, Cardinals signed Kareem Hunt. That's interesting. He's showing over Kyler Murray, which is also interesting, unless pre-existing injury is actually affecting Kyler Murray and he's not going to play, but we saw him in the, like, the preview, so I kind of expect to see him today. 194 yards and a couple of touchdowns last week for Bijan, and they are showing Kyler Murray, so we should see him in this game. I'd be super surprised if he were not playing, although a Cardinal that we should see today that won't be on the team in real life is Isaiah Simmons who is likely going to make the Giants roster after they traded a seventh round pick for him. I did a reaction video to that on my fourth channel. You can find it in the description of this video as well as on my actual channel in the channels list called Big Game Bengal. And we're releasing more non-Giants related videos on that channel as well, just talking about some things. Thought about doing a Trey Lance video now that he's been traded to the Cowboys, but there's not a whole lot to say. He's got potential. He, we haven't really been able to see it so far in the league. Has not been able to stay healthy. And now that he's been beat out as the starter and even the second string quarterback, Cowboys trade for him. He's going to be the backup there. If he gets a shot, we can reevaluate. But for right now, there's really not a whole ton to say. As we will kick off, it's Jakeem Grant back to return. Going to take a knee down in the end zone. Dolphins franchise legend Jakeem Grant, by the way. Interesting to see him back on the field as Kyler Murray will lead out the Cardinals onto the field, having a very solid season, 1,800 yards, passing 11 touchdowns to just three interceptions as we are now into the second half of the season officially. And uh, we'll see if Kyler Murray has what it takes to have a better record than we do today. Two, three, and six teams going in. And already a great start for Arizona, 16 yards. If you remember in the last episode, we traded Lorenzo Carter. We traded Calais Campbell. So those two are not going to be in the uh, future of this team. Obviously, they don't play for us anymore. But that leaves opportunities for other guys to play more. That's going to be Zach Harrison. It's going to be Taquan Graham, David Onyemata. Brady Jarrett dealing with a bit of an injury. So he's not going to be playing today as Kareem Hunt shakes off a would-be tackler Jesse Bates brings him down needed Zach Harrison to do more on the edge there really got caught up for a super long time on that left tackle you got to be able to do more when you can't really offer much of a pass rush you need to be able to at least shed blocks and make plays in the run game and he wasn't really able to do that as Murray misfires I think he had Zach Ertz for a first down but instead the Arizona Cardinals will punt and our dynamic offense We'll take the field. Yeah, we run the ball every play. When we pass the ball, it's either an inaccurate pass from Desmond Ritter or I make a boneheaded decision 
and launch it into traffic and it is usually intercepted so we're going to try to limit those mistakes today when i play smart man we seem unstoppable at times and we've put up good numbers in general 2,000 passing yards 19 touchdowns but the 14 interception number is obviously way too high at this point in the season so need to lower that a bit and we can't really lower it because that's not how interceptions work but what we can do is not raise it as Bijan gets 16 yards both offenses first positive plays were for 16 yards I don't know that there's anything to make out of that but it is true and uh, yeah Bijan continues to be the offense we're going to take a shot off play action and go at Buda Baker Kyle Pitts has a step on him and Kyle Pitts cannot reel it in I thought that was actually a great ball from Desmond Ritter I mean, Buda Baker was running basically stride for stride with him, but I thought Pitts had enough separation. Obviously worth the shot when Buda Baker's like four foot eleven and Kyle Pitts is six foot five, six six maybe. And he just drops the ball. It's in his hands. Baker had his arm swinging in there, but he really just dropped the ball. That would have been a huge play. Instead, it's second and ten. And we'll stop still probably pass out of this. They're showing blitz, and they send pressure. We lob it up. We find Julio Jones. Nice touch pass from Ritter. We get a positive passing play for once. That's nice. They got everybody in the box, but that leaves space on the outside for Bijan. He makes a man miss and gets some extra yardage. Bijan off to a great start. Already 30-plus yards rushing on just two touches. Now Algiers into the game. This is what I want. I think I have the settings in a good spot. Uh, I'll show you guys after the game if you're interested. But yes, yeah, so that's kind of what we want. Bijan, a couple uh, big plays, and then he's off the field. As we go to Kyle Pitts, he's trucking through, nearly getting to the end zone, but just shy. Nice play for Kyle Pitts. Really, really like that. That's what we need. We need our best players to come in and make plays. Bijan Robinson back out onto the field. This is what we wanted. And, I mean, they're basically begging for us to give Drake London a shot. And we're going to back in the end zone. Feet out of bounds. That is a sell. That is a touchdown every day of the week. Yet Drake London can't get the feet down. We're going to take a look at this. And I think in nowadays with the newer Maddens, you can actually look in replay and still challenge. And we're going to see that left foot definitely comes down. He makes no effort really to drag that right foot. And I think they did make the right call. I think just barely it's going to register as that toe hitting the white of the boundary. Now, I will also say it's worth the challenge to get the points. So we're going to throw the challenge flag. Maybe it's overturned. I think it's close enough where it's worth a shot. And uh, we'll see. Now, apparently we're challenging whether or not the receiver had possession. And I, I, that right foot does look like it comes down out of bounds a little bit. But I think worth a challenge in that spot. And yeah, we're going to lose a timeout, not overturned. I think it's worth a shot. We know in Madden it's tough for calls to get overturned. They do happen. And I think they've already happened in this series. And maybe on second and goal it's not worth it. But what if we get stuffed twice in a row and have to settle for three? I, I, I think it's worth a challenge in the first half there. As Bijan is stuffed on third and goal. Loses a couple. Or second and goal to bring up third and goal. And now it's third and goal. I've said third and goal so many times. But here it is. I'm not going to say it again. Here we go. Got to get into the end zone and we find it. It's Kyle Pitts. He's had a good drive for us. Had a drop, but I think he's found redemption. He and Drake London doing a little dance in the end zone. And we'll take it. London should have had a touchdown, probably. Kyle Pitts should have had a big play to start. Neither of which ended up happening. But we end up scoring. They end up doing a little dance. So all is forgiven. And we are on the board first. 7 nothing. It's a run. Cover it. Caden Ellis is there. And he's going to shut down Hunt. They ran on second and long. Could only find a yard. I, I just I don't like second and long runs. I say that every single series that I do. But it just remains true. It's just not a very good play. It sets up third and long. Like almost always. And yeah, they convert here. As Murray finds his Oklahoma teammate in Hollywood Brown. But, uh, yeah, it's just 
you're basically setting yourself up for failure unless the CPU is playing on all Madden difficulty, in which case they're always going to find a way to move the chains pretty much as Jalen Hawkins shuts down Kareem Hunt. Nice solo tackle for the money backer. Oh no, Terrell leaps, cannot make the stop. Rondale Moore secures the catch, turns up field, gets extra yardage. AJ Terrell went horizontal on the play, trying to break up that pass, could not get a hand on it. And we're gonna go corner matchups based on depth jar now. So Terrell's gonna travel, and I think still might be on Hollywood Brown actually or on Rondell Moore. As there he is, Moore spins him out. There is a flag. I can see this being roughing the passer. I could see this being a hold. It is gonna be a hold. I wanted to say I came in late and, and lit up Kyler Murray, but not called. It's the former Giant and UTEP minor, Will Hernandez, and also regular minor. He was below 18 once, I'm sure. And it is first and 20. That's gotta be a pick. Somebody find the ball. Murray just launches it. And that's Deontay Hardy, the former New Orleans Saint of a different name out of Assumption College, if I recall correctly. And not really much of a receiver historically, more of a return man, but made it look natural on that catch. Already coming up to the end of this first quarter, flying by, just seven points scored for either team. And Murray rolling out Crossbody fires to find the running back, Kareem Hunt. And that is a first down. Going to be first and goal for Arizona. We'll see if they even get a snap off here. Final play of the first quarter. Nope. Okay, well. Weird, weird first quarter. Cardinals uh, look like they're about to tie it up. I'm not really sure what we could do to stop Kyler Murray. He's just so elusive. He's going to make these throws. Um, off, you know, bizarre platforms and throwing angles, and he has the speed to make us pay as a runner, and that's a touchdown. I mean, Marquise Brown just gets wide open, and Hollywood scores in Phoenix area, where they play Glendale. It's Glendale, Arizona. Anyway, Cardinals tie it up, seven apiece. Not an ideal start for us defensively, it was just way too easy for the Cardinals to score that entire drive. The only real holdup they had was a holding penalty. I'd love for them to blitz here. Do not pick up Bijan Robinson, and it's a huge play. All right, they did immediately. We're going to roll out with Ritter. Send Pitts up the field. Plenty of space with Desmond Ritter. Julio picking up a block, and Ritter dives out of bounds after a 30-yard gain. That's part of the benefit of having Desmond Ritter is he's got really, really good speed. He's a long strider, picks up big yardage easily, and when nobody's open, or no one is perceived to be open, we can just take off with Ritter, and even on design runs, as the read option QB keeper gets eight. Second and two, obvious run spot, but it's my favorite play action pass time in the game. We're gonna fire for Drake London, and Ritter connects. London diving to the end zone, just shy. Massive pickup for London. No touchdown earlier, but he's made up for it here. Setting us up, first and goal on the one. He kind of got bumped there, still was able to get free. Obviously a great matchup for us. That's Drake London against a linebacker. Shocked that he couldn't end up getting into the end zone. But a very nice play nonetheless. And it's first and goal from the one. Does it look like we're running here? And it does it look like they're ready for it? Power against power, Bijan fighting and finds the end zone. Bijan Robinson, touchdown machine for us so far this season. He's on track to lead the league in not only rushing yards, but rushing touchdowns as well. That's a big reason why. He's able to punch it in on short yardage as well as break off big runs. He's a dynamic runner and also a receiver out of the backfield. So hopefully we'll be able to show throughout the duration of this franchise series. Gotta love it. We retake the lead, 14 to seven. We're blitzing, Smith diving at Murray. Murray throwing across body again. Trying to find the tight end, can't connect. That's good enough coverage from Richie Grant. Just chaos on that play. We blitzed Brown, who's not typically even on the field and he was just short of Kyler Murray, unfortunately. 
And there is a flag here. Murray taking off, takes a big hit from Jalen Hawkins and survives it. This has got to be a hold here. Illegal contact on Jalen Hawkins? Are you kidding me? Oh my God. That's insane. So you're allowed to make contact with the running back beyond five yards, right? Or at, at five yards. Uh, any receiver, really. And they're going to say, snapping the ball from basically the 30-yard line, that Jalen Hawkins making contact here at the 35 and a half yard line, that's illegal contact, maybe by letter of the law, right? But how many times in these franchise series have you seen my receivers just get bumped seven, 10 yards down the field? I throw the ball expecting them to break open and then it's intercepted and there's nothing. How many times has that happened to me in these franchise series? A billion. And that might be a conservative estimate. Oh my God, hey, Kate Ellis just got lit up. Get, and Kareem Hunt got lit up as well. I was saying, get him to the ground. I can't even believe that just got called. I don't think I've ever seen that in Madden. And it's certainly not when I'm on offense. Certainly not. Second and six. That's going to be wide open. I, I mean, man doesn't work. Zone doesn't work. And Kyler Murray doesn't work. He might be broken. He took a huge hit. And Clayton Toon's actually on the field. Kyler Murray... Hip bursitis. And they had Marlon Mack. Oh my god, Marlon Mack. If you don't if you don't know my franchise series histories, it's a good thing he's on IR. He would have gone for 250 today. Guaranteed. Again, another probable conservative estimate. But we have bounced Kyler Murray out of the game. And one of the first times I've seen a quarterback injury in Madden franchise in maybe five years. And again, that might be a conservative estimate. Could be a lot longer than that. But we got their backup quarterback in, the rookie. Clayton Toon out of Houston. I think he was a day three pick. Surely was. I, I wanted to say fifth round, but I didn't feel great about it. And we'll see what he can do. Can he keep this Cardinals offense in the game? He's going to have a third down. And I think we're actually going to go cover two on this. See if we can stop him. Caden Ellis right there. And the pass is caught. Okay. Is Clayton Toon going to dice us up? Seems likely. Trying to cover every... Toon's gonna run! But at Caden Ellis, he breaks a tackle! 12 yards for Toon. Just, I mean... Kick him in the knees. Do something. You can't let Clayton Toon stunt on you. Come on. Oh, that's gonna be illegal contact again. And it won't matter because it's a touchdown anyway from Zach Ertz. Yep. These illegal contact penalties are gonna drive me insane. How are you supposed to play physical coverage and not get called? I mean, the CPU is so overpowered. Yeah, obviously we knew the call. It's going to be declined. Arizona ties it up. I mean, I don't even know what to do now at this point. Are we just supposed to just let them catch the ball on us easily? Happens enough already. And now the user element's basically being taken out of the game. Can't touch them. Can't breathe on them. Can't even blow them a kiss from range. It'll be flagged as illegal contact. Good lord. All right, three minutes to score here. Oh, we got blocks. Bijan fighting. Gets four. Would love to use him as a receiver. Don't really want to target Buda Baker here. Throw it away. Oh, my goodness. Carrot Williams on the nickel blitz. Ritter couldn't have taken longer to throw it away. And now it's third and 16. Arizona actually going to call a timeout here. I mean, I guess we just throw it up. Third and 16. This is actually not the play I called. I called four verts. So don't ha don't know how we're in this. I really don't. And we're going to get a little bit creative here. And it's probably just taking a shot down the field in the direction of Kyle Pitts. Now, I'm not sure that they're rushing more than four here. So I'm going to go ahead and trust Bijan to get out on a, on a route here. And we'll see what happens. We're actually going to throw it to him. And Bijan catches it. And they're actually going to give us a favorable spot. That was a really, really interesting decision there. And they're actually, they're going to really keep that. They're going to give us the first down. Now, I didn't like anything getting super open down the field. But saw Bijan with potential blockers in front of him. Thought we'd just get rid of the football quickly. 
And I mean, they gave it to him. That blue line is is not the first down. I don't believe. I think that's like the current where, where the the uh, <laughs> where they marked him down. But uh, I don't know if he's even close to that. Uh, that is a terrible spot, actually. I would say. And I'm not going to complain. There's Bijan. Bijan. Ah, can't get by Buda Baker. Should have tried to juke him out or something. We find Kyle Pitts. We're going to throw it to him. He gets down. Nice play. Everyone wants to see Kyle Pitts get more involved. Me included. It just, it often works out that when I'm looking at him, he's not open. When I'm not looking at him, he's apparently wide open. So we're, we're trying to work on that. And he's wide open here. We missed him. Pitts hauls it in anyway. I missed time that. Doesn't seem to matter. Kyle Pitts using that massive catch radius to go out and make the play. Well, that is a phenomenal grab. First and goal. Bijan uncovered out of the flat. Got to make one man miss. Bijan down at the one. Kyle Pitts actually in the zone. That could not be more... <laughs> like more subtle look how hard that is to even notice that Bijan's wide open by the way he's just standing in the end zone we see that happen so often down here in the low red zone I try not to oh he just slid across the field is that a little time travel celebration is Bijan an alien what's going on anyway I try not to like Screw over the CPU too much. I don't really want to exploit things in the game. I don't want to make it too easy for myself. But I can't just leave a touchdown like that. I mean, it's just... He's wide open. The computer's got to be better. They have to cover him, I would say. But, uh, yeah. Receiving touchdown for Bijan Robinson. We're up 21-14. to 14. 30 seconds and two timeouts for the Cardinals to respond. We're going to blitz here. Okuda going to scream after Murray. Hopefully make a play. Mike Hughes, big hit, but the pass is caught. Arizona opting not to use that timeout. They're probably going to let the time expire and then call a timeout at like, yeah, 12 seconds. It's so stupid. It's so dumb how that always happens. Everyone was getting on me for calling a timeout in the, uh, the Tennessee game, but it, I think it's what would actually happen. Like, yeah, I can screw over the CPU where I can play the game, how it would actually happen in my opinion. So, you know, I, I did what I did, and uh, we lost the Tennessee game as a result, but uh, Cardinals end up getting a field goal here, kicking a long one, just, just horribly mismanaging the clock. It goes without saying that the Madden CPU is either incredibly overpowered or incredibly dumb, as we can't find the space with Mike Hughes. We saw daylight, could not hit it. They want us to just not do anything here. We're at least going to try a run. I wanted them to suggest like a slip screen here. But uh did not happen. We'll run the ball with Bijan. Look for some space. And that is the end of the first half. 21 to 17. Cardinals not going down easy. But overall, we've played fairly well, at least offensively. One of the best offensive performances we've had, I would say, up to this point in terms of being well-balanced. 150 passing yards, 86 rushing yards. We've been a real complete offense today. Our defense, I can't really say the same for. They've been atrocious. Some bad penalties, in my opinion, obviously have hurt us. But our corners don't cover. Our pass rush isn't one. It's a pass. Take your time. It's not a rush. But please, you have plenty of time. Throw it to whoever you want. And then, of course, the receivers will almost always catch the ball, you know, regardless of, of pressure, in my opinion, or uh, with the, you know, the DB, and, and regardless of taking a hit, they'll always catch it. But into the second half now, we start with the football. Perfect time to extend our lead, go up by two possessions, and just pour it on. Now, in order to keep Kyle Pitts double me, X-Factor active, we have to target him on the next passing play. Or else it just goes away. Bijan with a big stiff arm takes a big hit, big shot by Zayvon Collins. Second and nine. So this is where we would have to throw to Kyle Pitts. If we want that X Factor to remain active. Again, it's so subtle. I remember it being a lot more in your face that his X Factor was active, but not here. 
We're just going to throw it to him quickly, and we're going to get picked off because the free safety undercut the route. Jalen Thompson, that gets me so often. I How often is a free safety playing a middle read? Why is that always happening? He just sprints into the box. God, I never expect that. And you'd expect maybe the strong safety, but it's always the free safety coming to ruin my day. I just never saw him until it was too late. God. Well, what was I going to go a game without throwing a pick? I got baited. I mean, there's not much more to say. The free safety just sprinted in the box as soon as we snapped the ball. Really frustrating. Look at Smith make it. Our run defense has been fairly good today, or I would say even great. I'm caught on Jalen Hawkins! Okay. Just as I say that, we allowed 10 plus. I mean, this is extremely frustrating again. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to lose my composure, but Jalen Hawkins gets pancaked, and then it, he refuses to go around him or jump over him. He just kind of runs over and tramples Jalen Hawkins to death. Steps right on his stomach, but will not go around him. And then Kareem Hunt gets 10. And yeah, we're going to have three defensive linemen here in the red zone. All right. Oh, man, I'm getting getting annoyed with the game today. <laughs> They're going to take the lead. Touchdown. Yep. Diving attempt was made by Mike Hughes, and I called it attempt for a reason. It was an attempt. Didn't do it. Cardinals take the lead 24-21. The inevitable second half collapse has arrived. Second and three. A lot of Cardinals in the box here. If we can get to the outside, it's a big play. And I, I just didn't mean to do that at that time. It's great. Third and four. Let's move the chains. There's Kyle Pitts. Nice catch. Free safety is coming up, but we were able to get it to Kyle Pitts and get a fresh set of downs. Jono Smith into the backfield here. Going to operate as our fullback. Bijan, you got to be fast here. Good speed. Bijan Robinson gets five out of pretty much nothing, to be honest. Second and five. I did not know it was a read option. That's a little bit frustrating. Maybe would have kept it anyways had I, had I known. So I guess nothing really changes. But I was not expecting that. I thought we called inside zone. And it didn't happen. And now we're going to run a screen. And it's going to work to perfection. Bijan Robinson gets 10 plus. Tyler shut down. His first carry of the game, actually. He's been on the field quite a bit today. But uh, it is not really going to offer us what Bijan does. And it's second and 11. Let's see what gets open here. I like the idea of Drake London. I like the idea of it. He dropped it, obviously, because of course. But the idea I thought was nice. Third and 11. Who wants to get open? No! Julio's wide open! Ritter misses him. And how long is this field goal? 66 yards? That feels too long. I don't even think we have the wind either. So what we're going to do, we're, we're going to bring the kicker out, Young Waku. He's going to be short. And, yeah, we don't have the wind either. So... We're just going to take the delay a game, get a bit more space, and then punt. Don't want to do that, but it's what we're going to have to do. Yeah, Young Way is going to be about five, six yards short here. If we had the wind, it'd be a different story, but unfortunately, we do not. All right, Bradley. Need a boomer here. This should be a really good one. Oh, I like exactly where that is. Oh, that's going to be a great bounce as well. Bradley Pinion has pinned them on the two. Best punter on YouTube for a reason. It's been a while since I've been able to show that off. But we haven't really had many midfield punts lately. But Bradley Pinion, living up to his name. Beautiful punt. But I will say, historically, I really struggle to play defense when other teams have their back up against the end zone. They just get massive plays. And there goes Kareem Hunt. No! Okuda in pursuit. He's going to have to make the tackle too if he catches him, and he does. It is a massive play. I brought Jesse Bates up for that reason and we still couldn't fill the lane and make a tackle. <laughs> oh man, what is the point? 
What is the point of pinning them if I do that every single time? That just can't be a catch, thank you. I wanted that to be a pick. He basically threw it right at Caden Ellis. That's wide open. Zach Ertz down inside the five. Cardinals again, knocking on the door. They've gone from their, their, their own two. Now our three yard line, and we just run past Kareem Hunt, I guess. Touchdown, he kicks open the door. He's a professional kicker, so that would make sense. A lot of experience there. And the Cardinals take a 10 point lead. Just typical. Plenty of time left, plenty of time. But the Cardinals have full momentum, could make it difficult. It already is on display. Bijan can't get a yard. What are their abilities? So home team QB is immune to pressure. We don't get that anyway. Home defense can see primary receiver route to be a coach cap. Well, does that work for the CPU? Do they know what we're running here? If they did, they didn't show it as Ritter misfires for the open Drake London. It's becoming a nice trend. Third and 10. I think Julio's gonna be open here. See, is that not a legal contact? Oh my God, dude. How many, that's been called at least twice on me today. And now Julio's going to be open on a corner route and runs into 17 with the ball in the air, no less, is slowed down. Dude, what am I supposed to do? That's gotta be the read too, I, no penalty. Oh my God. That's so open. It's so open. We're going to the fourth quarter, down 10. Cardinals have the ball, probably gonna score again. No, Murray going deep. I mean, Hollywood Brown outran Mike Hughes. Had a touchdown with an accurate throw. And Murray misses him. I think we have to press more. I think that's gonna be the move. Press more. Force Murray to go down the field. I'm trying to get out there. Caden Ellis gets his hand on it. Oh my goodness. There is a penalty though. Illegal contact. It's, it's all automatic first down for the Cardinals, man. <laughs> I love this game. How good is it? It's amazing. Let me see that. Let me see the illegal contact on Caden Ellis here. Let's see what the call is. Oh my God. Are you joking? This is illegal contact. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's play action. Drop back! It's intercepted! Easy reads! User pick! Hop on pop! Caden Ellis! Massive interception! Stealing momentum back from the Cardinals. Oh, we couldn't have done better on that. We had to make a play individually. Initially blitzing when we saw his play action. Backed up as quickly as possible. Covered the middle of the field. Caden Ellis, great snag. And now we need to capitalize. You can see that safety blending in with the logo. I didn't really even see him there for a minute. Pitts wide open. Pitts, nothing with space. Down the sideline. Kyle Pitts. Beautiful. That's a way to get momentum. Big defensive play. Immediately followed by a big offensive play. And now we might go off play action, hit Kyle Pitts again. That's illegal contact. Finding Kyle Pitts in the end zone, touchdown. What a sequence by this Falcons team. Oh, he's about to get John Cena, SDFU, or F, I forget what the move is called, but <laughs> I haven't watched wrestling in over a decade, but you know what? I know John Cena and you can't see Kyle Pitts, baby. All right, three point game, eight and a half to play. Let's go. Second eight, are they running? Get outside, get outside. That's a huge play. Uh, no one set the edge, so that that's what happens. If we can hold the Cardinals to three here, we're still in a fine spot. It's so open. It's so open. Murray under pressure, just gets the ball away. Zach Ertz undercut by AJ Terrell, second and six. A turnover would be awesome here. It looks like they're actually going to run the ball. We've got to be able to make a stop if that's the case. Back up with Caden Ellis. Get just a little bit more space. Here's a run. It's actually play action. Murray looking for space. We're sending a player after him. And Smith drags Murray towards the first down to Quan Graham. 
is injured on the play and our defensive line depth is disappearing in front of us. Is that going to bring Noah Ellis onto the field? The brother of Caden Ellis? That's actually possible. No, it's Justin Ellis. I think Noah Ellis is not on the Falcons. He was a rookie in this past draft. I forget who got him. I wanted to guess maybe the, um, the Eagles did. And the Eagles did get him. Yeah, undrafted out of 2022. Uh, very different than his brother. He's six foot four, 367. Uh, and yeah, I, I didn't even notice that only one S in Justin Ellis compared to the two in Noah Ellis and a Caden, of course. And we're right there, dude. Devastation. Murray stepping up, running, takes a big hit, survives, goes down to the one. We got to find a way, dude. Bruce Turnham for Daquan Graham, of course. He's out of the game. And it's second and goal from the one-yard line. We're right there. We're right there. Murray gets sacked. Caden Ellis. Half a sack. Who met him at the quarterback? Might have been Zach Harrison, you know. We'll take another look. Caden Ellis getting big credit for it. And he was the guy who made first contact. No, it was actually Smith and Ellis who combined. We love that. It's going to be third and goal. Don't want A.J. Terrell playing in a hard flat. Just got to back up. Protect the goal line. Protect the goal line. Murray going to throw. Ellis drops the interception. Murray just gave Caden Ellis a birthday gift. Just said, hey, win the game. Caden Ellis says, nah, it's not my birthday, you idiot. Drops the ball. Unbelievable. Cardinals will extend their lead. 34-28. Touchdown and an extra point gives us the lead. But, man, we didn't need it. Insane. Insane. Four minutes. We need a good drive here. Not really going for speed. Four-minute drive where we score with 10 seconds remaining would be perfect. That's the goal here. They have somebody right over the center. Can we still dive at him? We're going to try. Looking for space. Three isn't awful there. And we're trying to be really conservative here. And just uh, pick up yardage. We're actually going to keep the run here. Second and seven. I'd like to make it third and three. Good block. I'll take a first down too. We'll get it. I don't know how I feel about a first and ten run. I feel like Patterson's going to get picked up here. Nope, he's wide open. We're going to hit that quickly. Get out of bounds. That's fine. Seven yard pickup. This is going to be the drive of the series. This is a real make-or-break drive for us, honestly. Trust Bijan Robinson. Up the middle. Bijan going to be just shy, but that's okay. We're going to run the football. We're going to trust John Fitzpatrick. Tyler Algier has space. Algier gets a block from John U. Smith. Algier to the open field. Buda Baker takes him down. Tyler Algier. 18 yards on the pickup. That is a big-time play. Two-minute warning here in Arizona. And as we are trying to take out the Cardinals, Bijan Robinson just completely just picked up and launched. Nowhere to go on that draw. Collins read it the entire way. And it's second and 13. Not what we wanted, obviously. Not what we wanted at all. We're going to roll out with Ritter. We're going to trust the run here. A little weird dive from Desmond Ritter. That's okay. Third and six. A minute and a half to play. I don't really know if I like verticals here. I really don't like this. We're going to change it up. I don't like this either. What do I like? What is going to get open here? I really don't like this. We'll see what gets open. We're sacked. Immediate pressure off the edge. We're going to have to call a timeout. I mean, we had to throw the ball pretty quickly there. Obviously, that didn't happen. I did not recognize pressure at all. How did this come in unblocked? <laughs> they rushed for Bijan in the block. Jake Matthews just never even attempted it. Bijan knocks him. <laughs> oh, completely ruins the game for me. Nice. Fourth and 11, game on the line. 
Get Julio Jones the football! Julio first down! Do we call a timeout? I don't think so. Although now you might consider it. We're going to let it go down at 28 seconds. Call our second timeout. And we can still run the ball here, you know. Let's run it then. There we go. Block for Bijan. Bijan power into the end zone immediately. Tied up in Arizona. Bijan Robinson might have scored a little bit too quickly, but we'll take the touchdown when we can get it. I just really don't trust the defense from what we've seen today. I don't know how you could. Bijan Robinson just, I mean, way too strong. <laughs> Takes three Cardinals into the end zone. It's a big time play, but did we score too early? This extra point would put us on top. Kick is good. We go up 35-34 with 24 seconds remaining. The Cardinals have three timeouts and all they need is three to win it. Again, I don't love this spot, but uh, couldn't stop Bijan from going into the end zone. So not a bad spot for the Cardinals at all. We just have to uh, make a play or two. If they get to the 40, we're in trouble. They need about 40 yards in 24 seconds. Let's find a play that's not going to kill us here. Yeah, th this could be okay. We'll show blitz and then play super conservatively. They're going down the field. Checking down. That check down helps us out tremendously. Timeout Arizona. They pick up only four. And they're going corners here. Let's play outside. We can actually press these corners because we know they're not running vertical routes. Another check down. But a broken tackle. Kareem Hunt gets the first. 12 seconds remain. Are they still choosing to go outside? Let's press again because we know we're not going to get beat vertically. Unless Rondo Moore is running deep, which he's not. They go outside. Pass is caught by Rondell Moore. And the Cardinals call their final timeout. With just five seconds to play, they're going to have to run a Hail Mary. And that is their only chance to win it. It's a touchdown or nothing. Here's the final play. Murray takes off. All we have to do is wrap up. Murray fumbles, balls out, and recovered by Jeff Okuda. Game over. We win at the buzzer. 35-34 on the road. We guaranteed the win. And you know what? It was never in doubt. Oh, my goodness. What a game. What a finish. And it does need to be talked about how choosing to scramble in that spot is borderline brain dead behavior. Single-handedly lost any chance of winning the game. Really it did. And we've been bombed before for Hail Marys. Check out the Commander's uh, first matchup in Giants franchise last season. Unbelievable. Anyway, Desmond Ritter. Play was spectacular, mainly. His play was really good today. Made one interception where I got baited super hard. Other than that, spectacular. 278 yards passing, three touchdowns. It's so bizarre to see three rows here for QB, by the way, for passing. But yeah, Clayton Toon did get in and did play extremely well. And then rushing, we allowed 133 yards to Kareem Hunt because of this. 83 yards after contact <laughs> and had a 65-yard run. And eight, like 64 of it on that play was after contact. He broke six tackles. Bijan had a decent game. Tyler Algier made one big run. Even though it wasn't 20 plus yards. It was it was close at 18. Ritter goes four for 44. And then receiving Kyle Pitts. This is the game you all were looking for. Seven catches for 150 yards and two touchdowns. That's an X-Factor type game. Julio with a couple of catches. Drake London could have had a touchdown, but a 37-yard a gain for him is very nice. But Kyle Pitts, the story of this one on offense. And then defensively, not really much happened. Andre Smith with half a sack combining with Caden Ellis. Interception for Caden Ellis, who also had a pass deflection, which I think would be called back on a legal contact. Same with Jalen Hawkins, I believe. And then the forced fumble at the end came for A.J. Terrell, and Jeff Okuda recovered. And we have some upgrades following the game as well. Bijan going to go up in overall here probably trucking is already at an 85 i use stiff arm kind of a lot with him 
But I think getting Juke move into the 90s is going to be what we want to do. So we're going to upgrade Elusive back this time around. Give me a big plus two to Juke move. Okay. Plus one to change direction, plus two to awareness. That's nice. Juke into the 90s is, I think, going to be a game changer. And I, I don't really do spin move that often, but getting that upgraded could be nice as well. And of course, the man of the video, Kyle Pitts, went for 150 yards and just dominated two touchdowns. I'd like to develop him as a blocker a little bit, but I think maximizing him as a receiver, I don't really know that you can go wrong with that either. Ooh, little rhyme. Let's do, let's do vertical threat, get him up to 90 overall vertical threat, and I think something cool happens. So, plus one to awareness, catcher traffic, catching deep route, running juke move. Plus two to break tackle, run block, finesse, and power. That's not too bad, actually. It's not too bad. Oh, and he has an ability slot open, by the way. So, let's equip something onto that. Matchup Nightmare. I mean, yeah. I often see him lined up against linebackers, and I don't know that he beats them that often. Matchup Nightmare has got to be the move. Red Zone Threat. I, I should have looked at what he had. I haven't really been focusing on this too much, to be honest. And what do you upgrade on Jesse Bates? We're going to go hybrid, and hopefully we get a speed boost upgrade in there. That'd be really nice. Don't think we're going to get it, though. Plus two man coverage, plus three to tackle. I'm not mad about that. And we improved to four and six. So outside of the Panthers, there are three teams in the NFC South, of, of course, outside of the Panthers, that have four wins. So we're right there. We could easily go on a run here, as there is Julio Jones, and Desmond Ritter's beard just popped in. That's the quickest I've ever seen anyone grow facial hair. That was impressive. And yeah. We finally got in there. Julio's addressing the team. This is our captain. Block out the noise. Let's ride together. All right, Julio, settle down. And keep the train rolling. 1,000 XP for all players. And winning has masked the frustration of another down week for the defense. <laughs> they scored three-plus offensive touchdowns. But overall, team morale remains in question. Well, if we keep winning, it's going to figure itself out. Week 11 is a bye week. We'll do that in this episode, I guess. No, actually, because it's prospect week, we won't. We're going to save that for the next episode. And that's going to do it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.